Welcome to Skyweek. I'm Tony Flanders from Sky and Telescope magazine, and I'll be your guide to the astronomical wonders that are currently on display overhead. Let's see what's happening in the sky from Monday, January 27th to Sunday, February 2nd. Mercury and Venus, the innermost planets, are visible all week at dusk and dawn, respectively. If you look low in the southeast at dawn, you'll see the waning crescent moon well to Venus's upper right on Monday, just right of Venus on Tuesday, and very thin and low to Venus's left on Wednesday. The super-thin moon reappears in the evening sky on Friday, lower right of the planet Mercury. It's well above Mercury on Saturday, and higher still on Sunday. The moon is between Earth and the Sun all week, which is why we see it as a crescent, when it's visible at all. We see only a thin sliver that's lit up by the Sun. Most of the lit up side is facing away from us. And the moon appears very close to the Sun in the sky, so we can only see it when the Sun is just below the horizon and the moon just above. That's before sunrise early in the week, and after sunset late in the week. On Thursday, when the moon is almost directly between Earth and the Sun, we can't see it at all. Likewise, Venus was almost directly between Earth and the Sun on January 11th. It has moved quite a bit since then, but it's still only visible shortly before sunrise. And telescopes show that it's a very thin crescent. In fact, Venus is so close to Earth now that you can probably see its crescent shape with steadily supported binoculars. As for Mercury, it was behind the Sun a month ago and is now coming toward us, while Venus is moving away from us on the opposite side of the Sun. That's why Venus is visible at dawn and Mercury at dusk. Venus is always the brightest planet by far, except for a few days when its lit up side is pointing almost directly away from us. There are three reasons for this. First of all, it's never very far from Earth. Even when it's about to disappear behind the sun next October, it will be just 160 million miles away. Compare that to Jupiter, the second brightest planet, which never comes closer than 360 million miles. Second, it's quite close to the Sun, so sunlight on Venus is twice as intense as it is on Earth, and 50 times stronger than on dimly lit Jupiter. Finally, Venus is entirely cloaked in brilliant white clouds, which reflect most of the light that falls on them. Mercury is a strange, elusive planet. It's actually very easy to spot if you know when and where to look, yet most people have never seen it. It's usually quite bright, but it appears faint because it's always quite close to the sun in the sky. That means that it's usually seen low and bright twilight, which makes it appear much fainter than it really is. This week is one of your best chances to spot Mercury all year. It's particularly easy on Saturday and Sunday, with the moon to point the way. But you'll need a place with a clear view down to the western horizon. Timing is critical. Start shortly after sunset. Mercury gets easier to spot as the sky grows darker, but it also gets lower in the sky. Mercury's brightness varies wildly, but it's never nearly as bright as Venus, even though it's closer to the Sun. That's partly because it's made of dark-colored rock, and partly because it's tiny, barely one-third the diameter of Venus and Earth. Next week, we'll talk about Canis Major and Minor, the big and little dogs. Until then, this is Tony Flanders from Sky and Telescope magazine, wishing you clear skies and great views. Brought to you by Woodland Hills Camera and Telescope, serving stargazers since 1952.